Mary Kay wait just way too long. So we're going to bring her straight in. How are you doing, Mary Kay? I'm doing great. Thanks, April. Happy to be here tonight. Yeah, and, and you know, it's cool. I got to let everybody know. So um, last night we had our Drumathon committee meeting, and Lynn Bartnett is on our Drumathon committee. And she was like, do you have any space available on the show? And I was like, well, actually, I had this space that I wanted to fill with somebody, but I couldn't find anybody for it. And I was just going to jab her on. And she's like, well, my cousin had triple negative breast cancer. And let me see if she'd like to be on the show. And I was like, do it, do it. And here you are. So thanks for agreeing to be a part of the show. So late in the game, we're super happy to have you here and learn all about your journey through triple negative breast cancer. Thank you. I'm, I'm yeah. happy to be here. Pleasure to be here. Well, thank you. So, all right, kick us off. How did all this begin? When did you first learn that you had triple negative breast cancer and how did you find out about it? So November of 2010, I went for my annual mammogram. And uh, they called me back and said, we got to do another one, which isn't unheard of for me. I have very dense breast tissue and have had um, fibrocystic tumors, things like that before. So I went back and they're like, yeah, no, you got to come take a, we're going to go ahead and do a biopsy and MRI. And the next thing you know, we're going to see the surgeon and, uh, they advised me that I had breast cancer. Wow. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was a little uh, a shocking, uh, weird, weird feeling, to be perfectly honest. Well, what was that exact date? Because I know for all of us, it's kind of ingrained in your head. Uh, the exact date of the diagnosis was, oh gosh, the Monday after Thanksgiving, I think like November 24th or something to that effect. The date that sticks in my head is the date that I had surgery, which was December 20th. Gotcha. Gotcha. So when you were first diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, had you ever heard of triple negative breast cancer before? Had no idea what it was. And, uh, you know, an odd thing, I had gone to a funeral in September for a girlfriend of mine from grade school who had died of breast cancer. I immediately, when I was diagnosed, went back to her Caring Bridge page and saw that it was triple negative breast cancer. So of course I was um, slightly freaked out thinking that I had just been given a death sentence and that there was no cure for this and that I was ultimately gonna die. And then of course started talking to some friends and found uh, there were more people out there that were living a heck of a lot longer. They were a good friend of mine from college. She was 10 years out and she was triple negative. Just didn't know anything about it. Yeah, and when you first get that diagnosis, especially, you know, if you've never heard of it before, and then you start researching it, it can be really scary. Like if you were to just Google triple negative breast cancer, the prognosis doesn't look good. And it, 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 it can be quite scary, especially if you're further along, like if it's more advanced uh, breast cancer, triple negative breast cancer, if you're stage three or four, obviously it's it's very scary. So you got your diagnosis. What was the next thing that happened? Uh, diagnosis, we went, you know, we did the lumpectomy. Um, that was the decision at that point in time. The doctors felt that it was um, the right decision because of where the, the um, tumors were located. And we went on our way. And, and sadly, we had to head back east for my sister-in-law had passed away so, from lung cancer. While we were at the wake or after the wake, I get a phone call from the oncologist that said, uh, yeah, you're coming back in. We need to get some clear margins and put a port in. You're going to have eight rounds chemo, and then we'll discuss what's going to happen from there. So, so again, a, a little shocking. Yeah. So was there any discussion about surgeries or anything at this point? Uh, no additional surgeries besides a lumpectomy. Yeah. Uh, we were going for genetic testing and had um, I been uh, diagnosed with BRCA, the, one of the BRCA genes, then we might have gone in and done the uh, double mastectomy and a hysterectomy. Uh, fortunately, I had neither, I did not have either one of those genes. The interesting comment, though, that came from the genetic doctor was that based upon our family history, I don't have those genes, but because of the history of pancreatic, prostate, breast, and colon cancer, that there was likely a gene. They just hadn't identified it yet. Yeah, you and I were talking about this uh, last night, um, that 
we're kind of in the same situation with that because um, on my father's side of the family, there's like a ton of cancer, prostate, breast, stomach, a lot of different things, skin. Um, but I don't have any of the genes that are associated back to breast cancer either. There's like almost 30, I think, different genes that they test against now for breast cancer. But as you mentioned, they haven't found all of them. I mean, right. when, when I was first diagnosed, there was only like seven that they had tracked back to breast cancer. So it, it grows all the time. And fortunately, Dr. O uh, does a lot of the genetic tests or she has a, they have genetic testing down where she's at. And she lets me know whenever there's new ones and I go get tested again. So we'll have to stay on top of that. And it'll be curious to see like one day we're, we're like, hey, I tested positive for this one gene and it might be the same. Who knows, right? You, you know, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you guys, you and I, par- our, our journey is kind of parallel because yeah. we were diagnosed that same year that I was. Exactly. Yeah, you were diagnosed uh, just like a month after me. Um, I was mm-hmm. diagnosed at the end of October and you were diagnosed the end of November in 2010. And so, yep. yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. And uh, a lot's changed since then. I don't know if you've noticed, I mean, especially like with a lot of the research and trials that they're doing, there's just a lot of other options out there. But continuing on in your story, so they told you at that point that you were going to have to start chemo and they were going to get you a port and you were going to have to do all that business. So how soon after your diagnosis did you start chemo? Do you remember? I do. I remember the exact date, to be perfectly honest. I um, was thinking I was going to be going on a retreat with church, and I'd already taken off a work. And uh, when we sat down to schedule the chemo treatment, I'm looking at my calendar, and I'm like, well, I'm already going to be gone. I'm going to be on vacation on retreat. And this is like a little God wink that I got you. It's going to be okay. And uh, so February 3rd of 2011 was my first chemo treatment. So probably like me, you were you were pretty scared at that moment in time about about the chemo because it's kind of like you don't know what you don't know, right? <laughs> we're all thinking about those days of what was that movie, The Gal Beaches, and the gals throwing up the whole time. Oh Remember? gosh, yeah, yeah, that's bad news bears. We don't like that. Yeah. Fortunately, a lot yeah. of those a lot of those older <laughs> movies. Um, I remember there was a movie called Dying Young also that was about a chemo patient and they were just throwing up all the time. And I don't know your experience, but uh, more recently, that's not as common to get sick from chemo because mm-hmm. they have so many counteracting meds now for all that mess. So so it's not as common for people to be like throwing up, getting sick. But I mean, I do know some people who have, but fortunately that's not what we, we had to deal with. What What kinds of things Me did either. you, what kinds of things did you have to deal with? I have to tell you, April, I, it was not near as bad as I thought it was going to be. Now I had a lot of guidance from friends that had gone through it and the tips and tricks that they gave. And it was take the nausea medicine that they give you, drink a ton of water, sleep when you have to sleep. Um, So I really did not have too much. In the beginning it was, I lived on a McDonald's chocolate shakes and biscuits. That was the thing that tasted good to me. And, uh, you know, stayed away from anything that was acidic. Uh, drank a ton of water. The uh, I really I I really was really lucky. You know, I watched some of my friends that have gone through cancer since I've had it, and I give them all my tips and tricks. And okay, MK, this one works. This one didn't work. But uh, so I I, w- I feel like I was pretty darn lucky with the the balance of the medications that they had given me, and um, just kind of people watching out for me. I'd have chemo on Thursday, go to work for a few hours. A girlfriend next to me who uh, has a nurse, nursing background, and she'd look at me and she's like, "It's time for you to go home now. You look peaked. Go home, go to bed, and then get up on Friday, have a new last shot, and then come home and binge watch TV all weekend long with my daughter." <laughs> it's good to be able to take that time off to recover from the chemo. And for those uh, watching, the new last shot that Mary Kay just referenced—that um, was a shot that you would get normally after the adriamycin. Um, cytoxin uh, treatment, yep. and it would actually the last shot ups your white blood cell count so that you're not as susceptible to getting sick because you really don't want to get sick when you're on chemo. Uh, it prevents you from being able to get chemo the next go round. It also um, could be a lot worse illness um, if you get sick when you're on chemo because you're you're immunocompromised at that time. So that the last shot really helps to to keep you well. And Mary Kay, did you know like this is the cool thing. So like for us, when we went 10 
you know, 11 years ago, we had to go all the way back to the center the day after to get the shot. And now they have like this thing that they just like, like put on you and it's got like some kind of timer in it. And then like right. sometime the next day, it just, you hear it go off and, and you get your injection and you're at home and you didn't have to go in or anything. That's just so crazy to me. I can't even imagine that. It's funny. It's just evolved so much since you and I went through the treatments. I mean, just even, you know, the number of treatments or how often they give them. You know, I had eight chemo treatments, one every three weeks. And, you know, I see some people now they're getting four, they're getting six, one every other week. Uh, it's so interesting to see how doctors have evolved and the studies have evolved to, uh, to improve the treatment. Yeah. And it's such a great thing. Um, you know, it's just like every year there's something new that they find and, and they're just chipping away at it. And so thankful that, that there's some smart, smart people out there doing that for us. All right. So when you went through your chemo treatment, you know, you mentioned that it wasn't too hard on you, which is great. And I think it's funny that both you and me, and I think it was uh, Angela, we all kind of mentioned what food was okay. Cause like, what people don't understand is when you go through chemo, it, it makes everything taste kind of not good. And then on top of that, you can't have anything even remotely acidic or you'll have heartburn just so bad. So, so you kind of have this small group of things that you can eat, and then you got to find within that group of things that you can eat what actually tastes good, right? And, and like she said, hers was Chinese food and mine was cheesecake. And you said McDonald's and biscuits, I think. Uh, McDonald biscuits, gotcha. cold and creamy and like buttery biscuits. That was my, my go-to food. I clearly didn't eat enough before the broadcast because all you're doing is making me hungry. <laughs> but, but yeah, so it's interesting though, right? Because like people don't understand that that, that happens because uh, chemo kills fast dividing cells. And the places that you have fast dividing cells are your hair, your fingernails, uh, in your mouth, uh, your skin. So mm -hmm. that's where you'll see all the effects. So some of the things that like happen for me, you know, you lost your hair. Um, some people will get mouth sores. I did a lot of prevention to make sure I wouldn't get mouth sores. So I did biotin like after every mm -hmm. meal and in the morning at night and stuff like that. Um, I had like the, the, the skin on my feet just like peeled off, you know, it was just this crazy stuff and just a lot of really weird things. What other kind of weird things did you encounter when you went through breast cancer treatment? Um, really the, the big thing was they pinpointed the day my hair would fall out. I was fascinated by that, freaked out on top of it all, but fascinated by the fact that they hit the nail right on the head. And, uh, I was supposed to be traveling that week. And I went into my boss's office. I'm like, I cannot go to California and have my hair fall out while I'm in a hotel somewhere. And, uh, she goes, well, what are you talking about? And I kind of went like this and just pulled a couple of chunks out. She's like, yeah, you're not going. You stay home. You're cool. Uh, so that I, and I found that that was really interesting too, after it fell out, how quickly it started growing back. Obviously you've got a head full of hair like me. It's going to take a while to fill that in, but it was, I could feel the hair growing back. It felt like, and, uh, and then to have, you know, to lose your eyebrows and your eyelashes and every ounce of hair in your body. Frankly, I love not having to shave for a very long time. I'm glad uh, I found somebody else who said the same thing because that's how I was too. I was like, I just, I guess more than anything, I just tried to find the things uh, that I could embrace through the experience. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't miss shampooing and conditioning my hair, you know, just getting in the shower and getting some soap and, you know, yeah. washing my head off essentially <laughs> was cool. Not having to shave at all, you know, not having to worry about your waxing your lip or anything like that. And then I, I was fascinated by the fact that like I lost, you lose all your hair, right? All, all hair, all, anywhere. all your hair, all oh, your hair. Yeah. in your nose. I had no hair. There's no hair anywhere. Any hair you had was gone. Oh. And my, I remember my skin was just baby, baby soft. So it's crazy. Okay. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a little rambly right now. I've, We've been on for a little while, but I enjoy uh, chatting with you about this. So, okay, after the chemo and all that stuff, what happened after that for you? So then after the chemo was done, I was uh, off for about a month. And then we did uh, 33 radiation treatments. 
Dr. Who, my, my oncologist felt that that was uh, a little bit of the icing on the cake just to make sure that, ensure that it wouldn't come back again. I, I will tell you too, I, I had two tumors. So the one was absolutely triple negative and the other one was barely hormone positive. So that was another reason that we went through the, the radiation piece. And then I did tamoxifen for five years. Okay, so I want to interject here because uh, tamoxifen for triple negative breast cancer patient doesn't help anything. So apparently that mm-hmm. was for your other breast cancer, which I wonder how common that is. That would have been an interesting question to ask Dr. O is how common is it to have two different types of breast cancer? Were they in the same breast? Uh-huh. Yep. How close yep. were they? In proximity? You know, April, I have no idea. Um, I would imagine that they had to be, because it was just one incision that they did. So they had, and they were both deep. So they probably had to be pretty close to one another. I'd have to go back and look at the pathology report. That's so crazy and fascinating. It's just, that's just nuts. So, um, so you did the tamoxifen, you had to have some radiation. What were some of the effects of the radiation that you had? Uh, again, I was pretty lucky. Um, the only thing with the radiation was probably the cumulative, uh, what's the word, lethargic, tired. And even that wasn't that bad. I think the worst part about uh, radiation was the fact that it took me longer to get my clothes off and get on the table, have the radiation and put my clothes back on again. You know, you, you get a park at the hospital, jump in there, do your thing and get out. Um, I had a little bit of burning, but not near, not near what I had expected. Aquaphor is just uh, a wonderful um, cream, just kind of lubed up and made sure that I kept that area nice and moisturized and uh, really don't have any scarring or anything from that. You did get out really lucky. So um, I, I know you mentioned it before, but can you remind me what stage they stage you at? It was one, I- right? It was it was one. Yeah. Yeah, it's like we were totally in line with one of one another <laughs> for real. Yep. So in the whole process, um let's see, you had the the chemo, the radiation, uh you had a lumpectomy, right? And then mm-hmm. and that was it and, and you're done. And so after that, how long did you have to see the oncologist? Uh well Doctor Who told me I will see him for the rest of my life, at least once a year. Uh, this was the first year, though, that I didn't have to have a bone scan or um, a chest x-ray. I just had a diagnostic mammogram and then blood work. Uh, honestly, I wish I'd have the bone scan every year just to give me some, you know, sense of peace. But, uh, you know, he looks at the blood work and tell if, you know, my markers are solid. And, you know, as far as he's concerned, I'm cured. That's awesome. And I wonder, again, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's interesting because, um, you know, I don't know which decisions are made based on triple negative and, and which are based on the other breast cancer that you had. Uh, for, for me with Dr. O, she was actually my doctor in case you didn't know that. Um, she uh, said that if after eight years I didn't have recurrence of triple negative breast cancer, then I'd be just as likely to get it again as I would, as I would be if I had never had it. So um, after eight years, she, she let me go. So I stopped going to see her, you know, three or four years ago. So um, it sounds like there's a little, little bit of a difference in that they just want to monitor more closely with you. Probably, I, I would guess, I mean, just, just because of the fact that you had two different kinds. I mean, that seems like such a, a, a rare thing. And are you still taking tamoxifen? Is that something you'll take forever? Is there anything, no. is there anything that you'll take forever? Nope, not with respect to, to the uh, breast cancer, nope. And in fact, I was about halfway through the, the tamoxifen treatment and they came out with a new study saying that you should take it for 10 years. And Dr. and I had lots of conversations about that. And finally at five years, he, uh, he agreed. He said that the markers were solid and he didn't feel like I needed to take it any longer. So I was pleased with that. Yeah, that's really great. I mean, not to have to carry anything with you. So now that you're well beyond all of that, are there any things that you can think of that have kind of been carried with you as a result of chemo or going through breast cancer, physical or emotional? 
You know, I, I just say, April, I think it's a sense of gratitude. That was a really, really scary time that I went through, my family went through, you know, our kids were eight, and, our little kids were eight and 10. And uh, just watching how so many people came together to support us during that time period. Um, and then grateful for, you know, just everybody around me, but my employer was so awesome. They just took great care of all of us. Um, you know, and the fact to have insurance, I mean, that was, I would go into my chemo treatment some days and watch these people come in and they were driving two hours to get to their chemo treatment and they're paying cash to pay for it. And I just, I walked away from this extremely grateful for so many things that um, were just kind of brought to light through this. You know, who, who thinks they're gonna get cancer? I, you know, I was 46 years old and, um, you know, living my life. And here you go, you kind of get the wind knocked out of you and you got to step back and just reevaluate things and look at what's important and, you know, kind of stop and smell the roses. Yeah, it's that whole perspective thing that we've touched on a lot with each person who's been on the show tonight is how much perspective you gain from going through something like breast cancer. Um, Mary Kay, we actually have a question from somebody. Uh, Demetria had a question. She was curious uh, what kind of medication that you did take for triple negative. And I think you didn't take anything oral, but you did have chemo. Do you recall the type of chemotherapy that you had? I had, I have that right here. Uh, they call it FEC. So it was the 5-FU, the cytoxin, and epirubicin. And then, so I did four treatments of that, and then I did four taxotere. Taxotere, okay. I've heard of uh, the cytoxin and the taxotere, but I actually hadn't heard of the other ones. And just for those watching, just, you know, say that, you know, depending on who you are and different things, you might be given different treatments. So that might be, you know, why ours are different or the, the frequency or whatever. Like for me, I had uh, four rounds of adriamycin and cytoxin, and then I had four rounds of taxol, um, which I think um, some people get taxotere and some people get taxol. So I think they must be similar in some way, but I'm, I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. You know, and I think the important thing too, to remember is that when you're going through this, you know, I know we all like to research, but be careful. And I heard you say this on another show, be careful where you're getting your information from, because the internet can scare the living daylights out of you. Um, and talk to your doctors and their nurses. I mean, the nurse is there to answer your question. And if something's not right, you gotta talk to them and ask them those questions. And make sure you take somebody with you to your visits with a doctor, yeah, particularly totally. early on. Mm -hmm. um, girlfriend of mine said, candid me a notebook and said, here, take this with you, but make sure somebody goes with you and listens to what the doctor has to say, because you're gonna be overwhelmed and you're not gonna remember what, I, what they said to you. And so, you know, gratefully, I had several people that did that with me along the way. And I try to do the same for friends and family of mine that have gone through the same thing, just to, I'm not a doctor, don't play one on TV, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can be those eyes and ears and listen to what they're saying and, and help bring questions about uh, that they might not think about. Yeah. And Mary Kay, such a good, good point. Um, you know, not only for emotional support, but having somebody with you. To, to help hear things so that you can remember. And I, I say this all the time too, when I went through um, everything, I, I took, I had like a little MP3 recorder because this is before you could just like record on your phone easily. <laughs> and so I had this little MP3 recorder that I brought with me to every, anytime I was around a doctor, if I was hospitalized during um, my breast cancer journey, I, I had that thing turned on and when a doctor w walked in the room, if I was at an appointment, if I was at my breast surgeon, the oncologist, it didn't matter. Any doctor that I went to throughout my breast cancer treatment, I recorded every bit of it so that I could refer back to it because it is, it's totally overwhelming. Um, you might hear the first part of something and then just zone out because you're like, okay, that was emotional or whatever, whatever happened. So it is super important to bring somebody along or record your visit so you'll have a reference and, you know, asking questions. And like you said, and many others before, is know your body, be an advocate for your for your health, 
you know, like don't hold back. If you have a concern, definitely take that to your to your doctor and ask those questions and and push through until you have peace of mind. Even if you feel like you're being crazy, just do whatever it is that gives you peace peace of mind. There's nothing more important than that when you're going through something like this for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so you mentioned that you you gained like all this perspective from going through um breast cancer. Did you have any like physical things that stayed with you like you know, for me, um, after chemo, um, my cycle was out of whack for like two or three years and then it just turned off and I went into uh, menopause. Um, did you have anything like that or do you have any kind of leftover things? Um, I was 46 when this happened and I think I was starting to go through menopause. I was starting to have funky periods, but I my period stopped immediately. So I've never had another one. Wow. Another, po- another positive as far as I was concerned. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. That's the great thing. Woo-hoo. Cause I think I got, I went into early menopause because of everything uh, as well. And, and, and I'm really not too upset about it. You know, um, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. fine. It's fine with me. Well, mm-hmm. girl, I don't want to, I know that we started you a little bit late. Um, we went about four minutes over right now, but I wanted to give you a little extra time. Did you have anything that you want to share out there for the ladies who maybe are newly diagnosed with triple negative? Just keep the faith, my friends, ask a lot of questions. Um, keep pushing forward. I would tell you to drink lots and lots of water and take walks outside. Oh, that is solid, solid advice that I know Dr. O would be behind you on. So thank you for that, girl. Thank you for waiting and for being patient while we while we chatted it up with Dr. O'Shaughnessy and and for for coming on on such short notice. And um, you're awesome. I love you, man. And it's so cool to meet you through Lynn. And you're just part of the family. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed being a part of it. Have a great evening. You too. Bye bye. Bye. All right, everybody, that was Mary Kay, triple negative breast cancer survivor. She's kind of like my triple negative breast cancer survivor twin and that she was diagnosed about a month after I was and uh, stage one also. And we're both, you know, 11 years, 10 years cancer free. So awesome, awesome stuff. All right.